Hi, welcome back. I'm Trevor Magnuson. I'm building a guitar and I'm sharing my hopefully noob-proof set of steps where the noob in question is me. In this video we're going to be making the headstock veneer. Now I found from previous projects a couple of pieces of uh, veneer pretty much of the right thickness but then I thought this piece of black wood is just a little bit too plain for a headstock so I'm going to take this one which has some nicer grain Let's get that down to dimensions. Okay, after all of that, and a little bit more that I didn't show you, we now have two pieces of veneer, some celery top pine, and some black wood. So now we're just going to laminate them together. And now we just wait for it to set. I haven't been too careful with the squeeze out. All I really care about is that the piece doesn't stick to the uh, coils that I'm using for clamping. Well, the two pieces of veneer are laminated together nicely now. Uh, there was initially a little bit of curvature across the grain uh, due to uneven expansion of the timber in the glue. Uh, but I fixed that by taking a little sliver of wood and just clamping it against the board like so for a couple of hours. What we're going to do now is to route into the headstock veneer the logo. Now I've got this template here to guide the router, but it's a bit too big, isn't it? So that's why we're going to use this pantograph that I made a few years ago. Let's get it set up. Now we have everything clamped to the table. The pantograph, the workpiece holder, the workpiece and the template. In the router I have a down mill bit which will make a cleaner edge. There was a little bit of wander in the pantograph and the legs are not perfectly even but the design I think will cover that. I have mixed up some white crushed glass, turquoise crushed glass and green glitter and we're just going to sprinkle that inside the ch channels that we just cut. The idea is to get it close to the top but not over the top. The other idea is to get the colours evenly uh, distributed. I've mixed up some clear epoxy resin, it's two part, and we now have to get that into those channels so that it flows around the glass and glitter to form something that we can later level smooth and flat. And we've got to do that without disturbing the glass and glitter as much as we possibly can. It's quite bubbly. Later on I'll use the heat gun to get rid of those bubbles. It's messy and the resin seems to want to grab and pull the glass particles and, and even have some of the glitter float on top. If we get a bit of heat into it, that reduces the viscosity and allows it to flow down through, uh, through the glitter. 
although I put a little bit too much on, that's okay, we will sand that flat. What we need to do now is to get that into a warm place and give it at least 24 hours. Another thing I've done, possibly not necessary, is to smear a bit of resin over the rest of the piece so that when we sand it down, uh, it doesn't cause uneven coloration when it comes time for French polishing. This also gives us an idea of how it's going to look as well. While we're waiting for that resin to set, I thought we'd make a start on the fingerboard. I've got a lovely piece of merbau here. I'll resaw and mill it down to around 6.5 millimeters thickness. This sled has a very slight slope to it. So I've put the piece in it and I've drawn pencil lines across the face. I'm going to pass it through the drum sander until one third has been sanded flat. Then I'll turn it around and do exactly the same thing again. That will give us a fretboard with uh, three facets that we can smooth down into our radius. I'm drawing a bunch of lines across the faceted fingerboard that we've just uh, drum sanded and I have a radius sanding block, this is 11 inches and I'm just going to be sanding up and down evenly until all of the lines have gone away. Trying to keep the uh, sanding block as parallel as possible because it ruins the curvature if we swivel it like that. It turns out that uh, we were a little bit light uh, taking that slanting sled underneath the drum sander, so I'm just helping it along a little bit by using a scraper to take off some wood at those shoulders. There seems to be a bit more material that needs to be removed there. It's kind of making the sandpaper work a bit hard. It took a little longer than I'd intended, and that was because when we were milling the piece, it must have rested in the drum sander, and there was a little bit of a dip in the middle. And as we took off the edges, that just sort of became a bit of a divot. So I had to take the whole thing down until that disappeared. It has now disappeared and any pencil lines I make are now evenly removed quickly and the uh, sand on the block is nice and even too. So that tells us that we have a nice radius. That's all we need to do on the fretboard at this point. We've thinned the headstock down to 4mm and I've re-established the centre line uh, using the centre post of the M in the logo and now I'm just tracing the headstock shape from our template onto the work. As so. I'm also going to draw a back of the nut line and another line 16 millimeters in that direction which will be the thin end of the wedge formed by the angle of the scarf joint. And now we trim it square.
Now paying very careful attention to the centre lines, I have lined this cut line with the very edge of the scarf joint and using a couple of nails to prevent slippage we will now glue the veneer onto the headstock. Some of the squeeze out will go down into the end of the truss rod channel, but we're not going to be concerned about that. I did a thing. I did a thing. Before gluing on the headstock veneer, I was supposed to drill a hole right there and cut a slot to make room for the truss rod adjustment nut. So now we're going to have to do it while the veneer is glued onto the headstock. So rather than using the band saw, we will be forced to use the most useful saw in the world. And they're not even paying me. This would have been much easier before it was glued on. Now that we know where the back of the nut is, we know the thickness of the nut and the scale length of the body fret, which is the 14th fret. So I've roughly drawn a line where that's going to be. Now I can decide how to place the truss rod and I need to leave enough space here so that our tongue, which we made earlier, uh, will be able to be glued into the neck without bumping into the end of the truss rod. Having done that, the issue is that these ends of the truss rod are deeper than the main shaft at each end. So I'm going to need to excavate a little bit with a chisel so that the entire truss rod will fit, will fit flush down into the channel. Uh, one other thing, deepening the channel up at the heel end, there's no problem. There's plenty of wood underneath it. But at the nut, there's only this very small volute. So we really need to take just the bare minimum so that the truss rod can sit flush. The truss rod is now sitting nice and flush. What we need to do now is to finish off this wedge so that the neck is perfectly flat right up to the brake line at the back of the nut. See that I have the sandpaper ending halfway across the block so that I'm only sanding the bit that I want to sand rather than messing up the top of the neck. Now that I can bear, pretty much see no light between a straight edge and that transition, I can just finish it off using finer sandpaper up and down the whole length. The surface is now smooth and flat. When we glue the fretboard on, it'll be a clean, strong join. The brake line, the back of nut line, is pretty much exactly where we planned it to be. Now we're not going to be gluing in the truss rod or this filler piece. There's a bit more that needs to be done first, but that'll bring an end to this video. Cheers!